get students wanting to come back every time. That's what we're going to talk about on today's episode. So the first time guest experience is a really important experience. You know how it is when you show up, maybe you've gone to, you remember going to a new school and you were trying to find places to fit in, or you went on staff at a church, or you started a new job, or you moved to a new town, whatever it is, your first time in different places made an impact as to what you felt about that place or that experience or that that restaurant or that that church that staff that whatever wherever it is you went those experiences the first time made a significant deal they talk about the the i don't i don't know who said this but i've heard it said that people make a decision about church in their first 30 seconds and when they pull onto your church campus where are the first 30 seconds spent they're spent in your parking lot right so if you don't have parking lot greeters, I think you're missing out on a really great opportunity. I remember visiting a Discovery Church down in Orlando, Florida uh, a couple of years ago. Some youth pastor friends of mine, we were going to check out churches that were opened post-pandemic. For them, they were open earlier than we were. And then we wanted to kind of find out, what, how, talk to them about what did they do to step into kind of this new season. And as we pulled onto the campus of Discovery Church, there were people in vests and shirts and lanyards uh, in the parking lot. As we pulled in, they were flagging us in the right direction where we were supposed to go to park. And uh, someone asked if we've been here before. And we said, no, this is our first time. And they said, oh, you get special parking. And they pointed us to uh, someone else that was waving. And we got these, this first time guest parking right up front. It was awesome. So that for us was like, wow, it already, I don't know, I, I don't know what, like, I wasn't sure what the rest of the experience was, but I knew that I already felt like this is a place I want to be. There's people smiling and they're excited for me to be there. And so it was a significant deal for, for me coming to that campus. And then people, as we got out of the car, hey, here's, here's a map of our church. Uh, do you have any questions? And, you know, we asked where the youth ministry was. We're meeting with the youth pastor. This person walked us to where we needed to go. It was awesome. Now, I have, uh, as I've been processing through over the years, what are the best ways we can get students who come for the first time to not only just enjoy that, but want to come back again? And I think there's a lot of things that that we need to be thinking about uh, in that we want, we want that first experience to be a really positive experience, right? We want that for everybody. But when somebody comes, they've been invited by somebody. It might be their parents that, that they're looking for a church. Or it might be a friend in the ministry that says, hey, we want you to come. You know, if they don't have a friend there, it's kind of, it can be a little more awkward and difficult. Because when you know somebody, it doesn't matter how outgoing you are. Like I'm, I'm a seven on the Enneagram. I, I'm outgoing. I'm high ID. All that stuff. I know... I know that I can go and I can talk to pretty much anybody. But the thing is, when I walk into a room, I'm always looking to see, is there somebody I know? Even though I can go and talk to anybody, I'm always looking for somebody that I know. And if there isn't somebody I know, then it's not as great of an experience as, as it would be if, as if I had somebody that I knew there. And so we talk to our students about that. Invite your friends because that's going to help them have a positive experience at church. So I read this book called The Power of Moments and, uh, Chip, and Chip and Dan Heath, brothers who made, wrote this book, they, they wrote the book called Made to Stick as well, which is a fantastic book on communication. I highly recommend it. Um, but they wrote this book on, on the power of moments. I wanted to read a couple expert excerpts to you. Uh, they talk about how when you go somewhere and you have a really positive moment experience, it can erase a lot of like negative things. Like you go on a two week trip and you, maybe you, you would rate, like you went to Disneyland and the lines were long and it was hot and you went to some restaurant and the food wasn't great and uh, the pool was a little cold so you didn't swim a lot or whatever. But there were a few things that stood high on your list. 
you might look at the whole thing and rate it a 40 or 50 out of 100. But if you have a few moments that stand out over time, when you look back and you rate that experience, the whole experience, you're going to rate that way higher than when you're looking at the whole right afterwards. And they talk about that. It says when people assess an experience, they tend to forget and ignore its length, a phenomenal call, phenomenon called duration neglect. Instead, they seem to rate the experience based on two key moments. One, the best or worst moment, known as the peak, and two, the ending. Psychologists call it the peak end rule. So something, whether it was a good or a bad peak moment, that's what people tend to remember. This research explains why in reflecting on your Disney experience, you'll remember Space Mountain, the peak, the mouse ears, the end. Everything else will tend to fade. As a result, your memory of the day is far more favorable than the hour by hour ratings you would provide. And that peak rule holds true across many kinds of experiences. It goes on to say, what's indisputable is that when we assess our experiences, we don't average our minute by minute sensations. Rather, we tend to flagship moments. We remember flagship moments, the peaks, the pits, and the transitions. This is a critical lesson for anyone in the service business, from restaurants to medical clinics to call centers to spas, where success hinges on the customer experience, where success hinges, hinges on the customer experience. Now, this is the key part I want you to hear, this portion of the story. Consider the Magic Castle Hotel which as of press time, which was 2017 when this was written, was the top rated hotels in Los Angeles. Uh, top three rated hotels out of hundreds. It triumphed over competi comp competition like the Four Seasons Hotel at Beverly Hills and the Ritz Carlton in Los Angeles. Magic Castle's reviews are stunning. Out of more than 2,900 review reviews on TripAdvisor, there's I think 3,500 plus now, out of, uh, over 93% of guests rate the hotel as either excellent or very good. There's something odd about the hotel's ranking though. If you flip through the photos of the resort online, you would never conclude, that's one of the best hotels in LA. In an interior courtyard features a pool that might qualify as Olympic size if the Olympics were being held in your backyard. The rooms are dated, the furnishings are spare, and most walls are bare. In fact, even the word hotel seems like a stretch. The Magic Castle is actually a converted two-story apartment complex from the 1950s painted canary yellow. Not something that would grip you, right? The point is not that it's a bad-looking place. It's fine. It looks like a re respectable budget motel. But the Four Seasons, it ain't. Nor is it particularly cheap. The pricing is comparable to Hilton and Marriott hotels. How could it be one of the better rated hotels in Los Angeles? Let's start with a cherry red mounted, a uh, cherry red phone mounted to a wall near the pool. Okay, key here. You pick it up and someone answers. Hello, Popsicle Hotline. You place an order and minutes later, a staffer wearing white gloves delivers your cherry, orange, or grape popsicle to you at poolside on a silver tray for free. Then there's a snack menu, a list of goodies ranging from Kit Kats to root beer to Cheetos. They can be ordered up at no cost. There's also board game menu, DVD menu. All the items are loaned out for free. Three times a week, magicians perform at breakfast. Did we mention you can drop off unlimited loads of laundry for free washing. Your clothes are returned later in the day, wrapped in butcher paper and tied with twine and a sprig of lavender, which is much more pomp and ceremony than the doctor used when handing off your first child. The guest reviews for the Magic Castle Hotel are rapturous. When the Magic Castle figured out that it figured out is that to please customers, you need not obsess over every detail. Customers will forgive small swimming pools and under, underwhelming room decor as long as some moments are magical. The surprise about great service experience is that they are mostly forgettable and occasionally remarkable. Now, when you phone the Popsicle hotline, is that a defining moment? In the context of a lifetime, certainly not. Hard to imagine a deathbed regret. If only I had chosen grape. But in the context of vacation, of course it's a defining moment. When tourists tell their friends about their vacation in Southern California, 
they'll say, we went to Disneyland, we saw the Walk of Fame, we stayed at this hotel, the Magic Castle, and you won't believe this, but there's a phone by the pool. The Popsicle Hotline is one of the moments that defines the trip. And it was an engineered moment. That's key right there. The kind of moment that other hotels fail to conjure. Courtyards by Marriott are fine places, but can you imagine raving about them to a friend? The point here is simple. Some moments are vastly more meaningful than others. For tourists, the Popsicle Hotline is a 15-minute experience that pops out of a surrounding two-week vacation. Like, that's significant. That's significant. And I've been trying to process through, what does that mean for youth ministry? Now, years ago, I don't know if you've ever seen an interview with Gary V. Uh, Vanderchuk, I think is how you say his name, but he goes by Gary V. Um, NSFW, not safe for work, okay? The guy swears like nobody's business. But he, he does, did this uh, podcast called Ask Gary V. And, and about three years ago, he had this guy, John Taffer, on with him. And they had people calling in to ask questions about marketing. And this guy with a barbecue restaurant in Lexington, Kentucky, had a barbecue place. And he wanted help on marketing. And he didn't have a great Instagram following. And he wasn't doing... Like, so they, they started talking. And uh, John Taffer talked about this idea that you shouldn't give out discount codes Give out free coupons. Like he talked about, like if, if you're a restaurant, give out free something. Give out a free steak coupon, right? When someone shows up to your restaurant, okay, we'll translate this to youth ministry in just a moment. But someone shows up to your restaurant and they've got a coupon for a free steak. They turn it in and that's a requirement to turn it in when they get there. Okay, he talks about the statistic. If they have a flawless experience, the statistical return percentage of them coming back for a second time is 40%. If they have a great experience again on their second time, their statistical return is about 42% on their third visit. Uh, if they come back again, it says that after the third visit, it's a 70% chance that they will keep returning. Like over 70% chance. That's significant. So he says don't mark it to the first time, mark it to the third time. That's what you want to be thinking ahead. And so he has this, I love this idea. I love this idea in the restaurant world. Again, I'm going to translate to youth ministry in a moment. They talked about when they turned that card in for the free steak. They, on the table, what before they brought back, when they're brought back to the table, instead of having white napkins on their table, they have red napkins. So it signifies to every staff member that they are there for the first time. And then they give them a great experience. They make sure, you know, people stop by to check on them and all that stuff. So when they're done with their meal, the owner comes out and he comes up and asks, how was your steak dinner? And they loved it. It was fantastic. He goes, look, I'd love for you to try out my chicken. It is to die for. And he takes out a business card. He writes down $5 off next chicken and writes his name and says come back hand this card in when you get here and they'll give you five dollars off my off a, off a chicken dinner and then when they come in they hand that card they know that it's their second visit they, they can track that in that way and give them the chicken the owner comes out says hey what'd you think of the chicken oh it was fantastic it was awesome Look, I want you to come back one more time. I, I noticed you didn't have dessert. I'd love for you to come back, get a slice of cheesecake. It's on me, hands right at, on, on a business card again. Come back, next time that cheesecake is on me. So when someone comes in with a, get a uh, business card that has free cheesecake and it has the owner's signature on it, they know it's their third visit. They've now been unwrapped in. They're not going to expect something free every single time. But now the likelihood of their fourth visit is going to be 70%. It's huge. So I want to, I want to put this and translate all of this stuff into uh, youth ministry. And one side note, he did say, don't give out discounts. People get, a dis get addicted to discounts. They don't get addicted to free. Like they, people get it. 
But there's, if there's always discounts, there's always a Groupon or whatever. Let's translate all of this into youth ministry. What if you had a first-time guest table? So students come and check in. Maybe you use Planning Center, some sort of app or program that checks students in, keeps track. That's a safety thing. It's for another time. But you don't have, the, like, there's somebody new. They're not in the system. Don't hold up the line by having them enter all their information in. Have them walk them over to your first time guest table. Oh, you haven't been here before? Oh, awesome. We're so glad you're here. And you always want to put your brightest, smiliest people at the front, right? Get students there and get, get happy, smiling volunteers there. Walk them over to a first time guest table. Make a sign or you, you can go on the cheap or you can spend money, whatever. But make that like very clear that's the first time guest table. Then have some volunteers. Their sole job is to help first-time guests, students who show up for the first time, feel welcomed and connected. So let's say they're there the first time. Now, a couple of these, I haven't tried these fully out. Most of this I've tried out, but I just had this idea today when I'm thinking back about the red napkin thing that Gary Vee and John Tanner talked about. What if you had, you know, those jelly bracelets with your branded uh, logo or name of your youth ministry put on? They come over the table, hey, let me put this on your wrist. This, this, they're going to use this later on. And then have them fill out an information card. Have them fill out pro tip. Ask them what their name is and all that stuff, and you fill it out. Because I have had a lot of those. I switched from having students fill it out to having volunteers fill it out because there's some atrocious handwriting out there and you don't know if something's a nine, an H, a four, or whatever, right? Or a B. So maybe have some a leader that has legible handwriting to fill it out. So they ask the students, hey, what's your name, information? Get as much as you can without making it take forever. Make sure you get contact info from parents if the student knows it. And then uh, at the bottom, one of the things I love doing is putting your favorite candy and have them write in what their favorite, or you write in what their favorite candy is. And if they're like, I don't know, just push them on it. Then remind them that their bracelet's gonna be used later on in, in the service. And then I love getting having students who are kind of on student leadership involved and going, hey, I wanna introduce you to so-and-so. This is their first time here. They then walk them over. Maybe, maybe it's finding somebody who goes to their school or in their grade, or they just go and sit with them. And they, they're the connectors. They introduce them to some of their friends and they sit with them for the service because you know how it is. If you don't know somebody, somebody pays attention to you, all of a sudden things change. So you have them walk over and sit with them. Then at some point in the service, you talk about the impossible shot. Okay, this is just an idea. Lots of youth ministries use impossible shot. I'm going to talk more in depth on that, and I'll give you a free video on that another time. Uh, but impossible shot, essentially trying to get something through a hole of something, right? I've used toilet paper rolls into a bucket. Uh, most recently, I used uh, kind of a Nerf uh, Zygat or something like that, um, Zynga uh, bow and arrow through an impossible shot. I'm, I'm gonna put a link to uh, a free download for the the design for the impossible shot that what we did is we ha we sent it to somewhere to print and put it on like that chloroplast, but something like that, like hard, and then we cut out the middle. Anyhow, come come back to that another time. Uh, but then we say, hey, if you have one of these, these bracelets on, we wanna give you a shot at the impossible shot. It's your chance. If you make it on one try, you will get, and we say, $25 gift card of your choice. And we buy a bunch of different $25 gift cards. in and out Chick-fil-A, Blaze Pizza, uh, Amazon, um, Cold Stone, whatever. Like, my favorite stuff, right? And what's around you. So just find things that you know students really like. So then, uh, if they were invited by somebody, their friend gets to go with them as well. Now, they, I've had students who weren't comfortable, they didn't wanna be a spectacle, and I totally get that, you don't wanna force anybody. Don't push them to come up. And then say, you know, if you've got a connector student that sat with them, is there somebody that wants to take the shot for them? You're not gonna win, you, if you get it through, you win it for 
uh, our new friend Charlie or whatever, right? But give them, and if they make it, they get the $25 gift card. If they don't, you still have the students clap for them because it's a big deal, that's fun. Then, at the end of the service, hey, if you have one of these braces, it's your first time to, here today, go back to the first time guest table. They've got a little gift for you. And when you get to the first time guest table, have a nice bag, maybe you've, like I, I purchased uh, one of those rubber stamps that you put uh, dip, you know, put on a pad and we had our student ministry logo put on there. So we put it on little white bags and then I, I had the volunteers take like some Christmas ribbon and tie it up on there with a, uh, a little gift, like a name card with their name written nicely on it. In the bag, information about your student ministry some QR codes that they can scan that, that gives a highlight for students, gives a highlight video of here's all the stuff we do in a year. And then another QR code for parents and it says on there for parents. And, that, and the video is you talking to parents about what the ministry is about and how excited you are that their, their student had come to the youth ministry that day and here's what they can expect and here's what you can expect as a parent. Please sign up for our email newsletter or whatever. Then we also have some other branded things in there. I've done like branded sunglasses. I've done branded backpacks. So we've actually used that as, you know, those string backpacks that are fairly cheap. Branded pens, you know, whatever kind of like trinkets. But then also thinking of the power of moments thing, taking their favorite candy bar and putting it in the bag. Now, what I do is just go out to Costco or uh, Shop and Save or some store that sells like kind of bulk stuff and buy those bulk candies that have like a, like five or 10 of each candy bar uh, and get like, get like your top six different candy bars, favorite candy bars by students. You can poll your students and ask them or whatever, but Snickers and um, you know, that kind of stuff. Then hopefully you have what they already have. Now this is, again, this takes time to develop. It takes volunteers. But what if you had a volunteer that didn't really want to do youth ministry, maybe it's a parent or whatever, and you call them the moment runner and you explain this power of moments thing. And let's say somebody put down a whatchamacallit candy bar, which back in the 80s was so awesome. And they still sell them now, but nobody's going to say whatchamacallit is their favorite candy bar. But let's just say they did. Your moment runner runs out to the store during service, buys a whatchamacallit candy bar, and you put that in there. And then when they open up their bag, they see their favorite candy bar. And they're going to have forgotten that they wrote down that what their favorite candy bar, most likely. Because I've had students say, how'd you know what my favorite candy bar was? And I'm like, eh, you know, we just know. But um, then another, another idea with that. So, oh, also in the bag uh, is a card. And we explain that card. We pull the card out for them. We show them, hey, this is a this is kind of a punch card. Um, you can get that download Youth Ministry. They they had some punch cards there, but um, on this punch card, if you come back, the next time you come back, don't say if, but the next time you come back, we're gonna give you a free drink at our cafe or whatever, some some little free freebie. So they come back when they come back with that card. Your leaders know that that's their second visit. Okay. Remember, you're pushing towards the fourth visit and you're not just marketing towards the first, but you want to make that first experience really good. Second experience, now they come, they get a, your free drink from your cafe or whatever. Then you hand them or on that card, you write down a note on there saying free surprise gift or free shirt next visit. So they come back and we, we had we have student ministry, uh, you know, branded T-shirts and, uh, you know, that we usually sell or whatever. But we get, we'll give them away if they come back a third time because that third time pushes, you know now it's a 70% chance that they're going to come back for the fourth time. That's what you're marketing towards. And once you've got them in three times, you get them locked in to be part of what's going on in your youth ministry. I remember when I was uh, in middle school, we went and visited a youth ministry about 20, 30 minutes away from our church, but it was a, it was a big church. And they had uh, a picture wall. And if you come three times, you get your picture and it's put up on that wall. So I, we always thought that was the coolest thing. So we went three times to make sure that uh, we got our picture up on the wall. Um, another idea, so then 
So that's all the first time guest bag. They've gone, you've, you, you see some response. But also on that first time guest experience, after they've left, they've given you their name and their address and their email and their, their phone number. If you have a team that's a first time guest team, that part of their job is to follow up. And that can be you, uh, but also any volunteers. I think it's great to have students and leaders to help out with this, but have them write a postcard. Nobody gets anything handwritten anymore. So when you get something handwritten, it's a big deal. Write a postcard, fill it out, put it in the mail the next day. Get that thing out. And on there, you know, simple script like, hey, it was so great to have you at youth group today. We're really glad. We, we look forward to seeing you next time. See you next Sunday or Wednesday or whatever it is at put your time in there uh, and then write your name and have have the postcard be something that you branded with your ministry logo and whatever uh, and and an address on there that so they know where to come back again um, and where it's from the other thing they would do is set if they put a phone number there was a text hey it was really great to meet you today or if it's just a parent hey your your son or daughter your student gave us your phone number just wanted to send you a quick text and let you know it was so great to have them part of the ministry we look forward to seeing them again uh, you could do, we used to do, back in the day, I've been doing this almost 30 years, back in the day we would go visit somebody at their home. Nowadays that's, a, that's pretty intrusive, so we don't do visits anymore, but you could, this is just an idea, uh, you could go and get some cheap balloons, inflate them with some helium, go to their house, tie the helium balloons on their doorknob with another one of their favorite candy bars, and a note that just says, hey, we're so glad that you came and visited. Look forward to seeing you again. Like those are, when you think of the power of moments, like the, the favorite candy bar I think is one of those things. The impossible shot can be one of those things if they, if they have fun, especially if they win. Now our students, like we've discovered every four to six weeks is how often I give away a gift card. I'm not giving away one every week. And I have a good distance and I, I always say, they call it the impossible shot for a reason. It's not easy. But when someone makes it, all of our students go crazy. They just have, it's just like, they know to cheer and clap for it. I know some youth pastors who will have some prize and if somebody wins the impossible shot, they get that prize. If they don't, then it gets added to the next week and they, they just keep piling up until somebody wins and they get a whole bunch of stuff. So. That, that's another idea. I think it could be a lot of fun. But you want the first time guest experience to be awesome. Of course you want that experience for everybody every time. But that first time is so critical. Put your most smiley people in the front. Put them in the parking lot. Have them wear your branded shirts and all that stuff. And smile and welcome. Get them plugged in. It's part of moving them. If you if you didn't watch the strategy video, I encourage you to watch the strategy video um, of, of like growing your ministry through that. I believe that's super important, like getting students from, to move from where they're at to the next step. And this could be in an outreach or your service or whatever, but they have an experience that says, I wanna be part of this in the future. I wanna, I wanna be part of what's going on here. This is a group of people that are caring and loving. That's all I got for you today. By the way, before we go, two things. One, if you'd like a free copy of my games ebook that I've written, I've written a, an ebook on, on games as well as an audio book that goes with it. It's totally free. Uh, just click the link in the description and I'll, I'll send that to you right away. Would love for that. If you could like, subscribe, all that stuff. And here's the question of the day. Here, here's your question. What is something that you currently do for first-time guests? And if you don't do anything currently for first-time guests, change that question to what is something you are going to implement as a result of what you heard today? Maybe answer both of those. All right, thank you so much. We'll catch you on the next podcast. God bless you. See ya.